What's up, what's up, what's up, beautiful, beautiful people. How are you guys doing today? My name is Luffy and I'm coming to you guys with another video. This one is a special request. Someone asked me to do a video on where should you put your PPP and EIDL funds? Uh, so I spent the past couple days now reading um, all of this documentation. This one's for the PPP. Um, it was only about 10 pages or so. And this is for the EIDL. It's only about 15 pages or so. Um, but I read them so that I can give you guys the most accurate uh, information possible um, in terms of where should you put your PPP and EIDL money uh, while you're waiting to use it. So before I begin anything, I just want to say I'm not a CPA. I'm not a financial advisor. None of that. I'm, I'm literally, I'm just some dude on YouTube. So don't sue me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, um, but yeah, so PPP, we'll start there. Uh, PPP, you guys know, Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, this is funds that you're going to use mainly towards payroll. Uh, so there's a lot of people saying, you know, you need to put these funds in a separate account because they're all of the special rules and regulations. Um, you know, just from what I've read and what I've been reading, nah, like, you know, you don't got to. You know what I'm saying? You'd like, when you start a business, any business, and, and you guys should know this as small business owners, People tell you all the time, don't mix your personal funds with your business funds. And a lot of people think it's because that's the law and you have to have separate accounts. And it's not because it's the law. It's because most people are fucking idiots and they don't know how to properly account. So it makes it a lot easier when you have a completely separate account that you use for your business expenses versus your personal expenses. So that way, when it comes time to actually do the accounting, the bookkeeping and submit your information for taxes and whatever else you need, you have accurate information. Um, instead of going through and being like, well, was this Chipotle that I ate, is that considered a personal expense? But I did drive, you know, my business car halfway. No, that, that's why they just tell you like, yo, just have separate accounts for business and for personal. And the same thing for PPP is you actually don't have to put it in a different account. You could put it in the same account that you have your business funds in. Uh, you just keep track keep a tally of what it is that you're actually spending the money on it's, it's actually really simple since it's an eight week period We're, we expect it to go longer than eight weeks just based off of how talks in in you know the legislature is currently happening um it looks like you know they're going to extend that covered pe they call it the covered period um uh, maybe the 16 weeks hopefully we'll see i don't know uh but because of that people were thinking that you have to keep it in a separate account so that they can properly account for payroll because, you know, PPP, only part of your payroll expenses are covered. Uh, there's certain things in, in your payroll expenses that aren't covered. Like, for instance, if you're using ADP and you're paying ADP a fee, uh, it's not covered as part of the your payroll cost, I believe. Uh, but that's not clarified yet, to be completely honest with you. Like, you know, we'll see. We'll end up seeing. So let me let me not speak out of turn. But, you know, my, my short opinion synopsis... You can keep it in the same account if you want. Um, what's 10 times more important than if I should keep it in the same account or not is figure out, like, strategically speaking, how can we use this money and especially use it not just by the letter of the law, since the letter of the law hasn't even really been written or, or put out there, the guidelines, but more so with the intent of the law. I think that if you act in the very least within the intent of the law, um, you can, you, you'll do fine. You know, and there's another point I want to bring up about it, but I'm going to wait till after I address the EIDL since they kind of go hand in hand. Um, but in terms of the EIDL, the 15 page one, <laughs> um, it has a lot less rules and re regulations, restrictions, all that on the amount of the funds. So even more so, doubly so, you can put the money in your personal account, um, in your personal business account. Uh, some people are like, yo, I'm going to use the money to, to buy treasury bonds. I'm going to use the money to, you know, sit it in a, you know, just park the funds in a, a money market account. You ask me, that's just being completely blunt with you guys. That's fucking retarded. Okay. Like, why are you going to take out a loan for 3.75% and then park it into an investment vehicle that makes you 1%? Like, you just... You're just losing money. Like it doesn't. <laughs> I don't even know what to say because it's so retarded to me. I don't even. I don't even know what to say. But um, yeah, if if you guys are thinking about ways that you can actually use the money, 
Use it to for what it's for, to expand your business, to to turn profit. You know what I'm saying? To to grow, to to uh, operate. And and a lot of the rules from the EIDL, you know, some people are going to harbor me right now. They're going to say, hey, you can't use this money for expansion. You can't use the money for certain things. And that's absolutely correct. You know, you should read it to know what you can use it for. At the same time, if you're acting in the course of normal business um, and you have the receipts to back it up, you can easily say that this 150 was from, you know, because now the cap is 150, right? This 150 is uh, going towards these expenses. That's what it was for. And all this was from our the profit that we turned from the company, you know, um, but now going back to to what I actually wanted to address with these two programs. Number one, with the PPP, you know, a lot of people, especially the PPP, a lot of people are like, we're not taking out this loan. This is a bad loan. It's going to sink businesses. My niggas, it's a 1% loan. It's 1%. Like, even if you fucked up, like you took out the money, say, for payroll expenses, you weren't able to, to use all of it for payroll expenses, you didn't act in ill intent of the law. You didn't commit fraud. You were trying to take out the money for payroll expenses. You feel me? And it just wasn't all forgiven. And you used part of that other money for something else. Like, and then you paid back the loan at 1%. It's not like, yo, take the money and go, you know, you can't even go to Vegas right now. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there's a lot of people who are like, yo, don't take out the PPP. It's a scam to, you know, make small businesses fail. I'm hearing that a lot more than, you know, the EIDL is a scam. And is although I have heard of people giving back their EIDL funds. And part of the reason being is because they haven't dealt, I guess, with the SBA before. They're, the rules and restrictions. So, yeah, of course, in here, there's a lot of rules and restrictions people don't know. You know, uh, if you when you do this, the SBA files a lien on your company assets. You know, um, if you want to relocate your company, you have to ask the SBA. If you want to sell equipment, you have to ask the SBA. And, you know, all this is in the documentation that you sign. And that's dissuading a lot of people from actually getting the EIDL. And all that proves to me is that, for real, for real, A, you never really needed the money. And two, you're probably fucking retarded, too. <laughs> like, because, yo, like, the speed limit is 25, Right? Are you going to get pulled over for going 26? You know, like, are, is, is going 24 too slow? Is that suspicious? Like, you, you guys you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Like, I'm not telling you to, off of intention, break the law and do something wrong or this, that, and the other. I'm just saying that from my personal experience in life, right, if you do things with the right intent and you, you cover your bases, a.k.a. you keep making your payments... Don't do nothing crazy and switch up the entire composition of your business or sell it or some shit like that. But why would you not take out a $150,000 loan at 3.75%? Because you're scared that... you you. This is how all SBA uh, loans are. Like, every single... You get a 7A loan from the SBA, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be 10 times longer than this with the same exact language in it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I get it. I completely get it, guys. Like, you know, especially people like, oh, I, you know, I don't want to take on debt for my business. I get it. But that's not all bad, you know, especially if you're being offered debt at these sorts of rates. You know, like I said, like people who are afraid to take out debt are afraid to bet on themselves. At the end of the day, that's what it fundamentally means, because. If someone's offering you $150,000 at 3.75% and you say no, what you're pretty much saying is, I don't think that there's a way for me to get a ROI, return on investment, over 3.75%, which is just fucking retarded. Like, just bet on yourself and you can, every project that I do, return on investments at least, you know, in these real estate projects, the, the project's return on investment is like 15%. You know, after you deduct all the expenses and whatever, maybe 10%, 8%, 7 whatever it is, you know, the actual number ends up being, but 3.75%, like, I can't get over that rate? Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? You could literally, like, the past 10 years, you could have taken out this EIDL, put it, just parked it into a S&P 500 index, 
and you would have got every year you would have just made money on that like you wouldn't have you would just do one transaction one transaction buy <laughs> one buy option at, you know what I'm saying like and and waited 10 years and every every month paid them a little bit and you would make money by borrowing money but you know a lot of people don't want to do that hey you guys do what you want to do at the end of the day in my mind if you're offered this money at 1% for the PPP and 3.75% for EIDL you you would be foolish foolish to not take it and in terms of where to park it park it in your business park it in you invest in yourself invest in your business like that's what the money is for and I'm not trying to be a stickler and be like oh that's what the money is for that's what you should use it for I mean that's that's technically what you're signing but what I'm saying is that if you don't feel like your company has a future sure don't take out this money because there's no future for your company but if you know your company can make money if you know you can make money why on God's green earth would you not take out this money it's a blessing you're not gonna get a lot of these in life guys the government doesn't really be looking out for us like that so if they're coming through saying hey here's 150 hey here's a PPP take it and figure out what you can do with the money to make you money and grow your business ultimately as small business owners that's what we're trying to do we're trying to grow our business we're trying to continue to provide a valuable resource to people continue to employ people and if you don't take the risk by taking out the EIDL I can't believe when I found out people weren't taking the EIDL it's in my mind it's the same exact people who applied for it thinking it was just a grant not realizing that they're applying for a fucking loan Which, if anything, should show you that there's a lot of people out there with a lot more dollars than cents. And it is what it is. But I just want to make this video. I wanted to make it real short for you guys. It ended up being a little bit longer. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Uh, park the money in your business. You know, invest in yourself. And use that money so that you can grow your business and pay back the loans that you took out. It's that simple. Is think of it as startup money. Think of the government as trying to invest in your company. Just like if you would have went on Shark Tank or something, they'd be like, hey, you know what? Here's some amount for some equity percentage. There's no difference than here's some amount for some interest percentage. That's all it is. The government's giving you a startup fund. Use it. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you like my content, subscribe, comment down below, like the video, everything. More videos to come. One love. I'm out.